Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Hainline Manufacturing. In this episode, I'm going to be going over the coolant system I made for my 770M. I'm going to be explaining how I made it from the ground up and kind of why I chose to make my own system versus buying the factory Tormach one. And we're also going to go over the importance of adding a coolant system to a machine. As you guys know, in this machine, I used to run uh, mist coolant or mist oil. Um, and it worked fine for what I was doing, um, but I wanted to kind of push the machine harder and I didn't want to risk uh, material heating up or end mills breaking um, from the material getting gummy. So I decided to switch to coolant uh, and also I wanted to make it so I wasn't smoking up the garage when the oil was burning because um, that just never ends well because uh, you have to put fans in the window and try to get the smoke out. Um, so in this video, uh, we're going to start off with going over the coolant system uh, and how I made it and then at the end I'll kind of go over the benefits. Um, so let's get started. So we're going to start off in the coolant tank right here. This is bigger than what the factory one is um, so you'll have to do some modification to the sheet metal that sits right here. Um, I have not done that yet. Um, I actually don't mind that being open right now. I did put this back in. I had this out when I was working on it. Um, just to kind of uh, keep the splashing from spilling up. So I will be putting in a description uh, all the pieces to this, all the parts, um, and then you guys can uh, find the equivalent or the actual pieces uh, in the build materials and build your own. So this pump is bigger. Um, so for the sheet metal, let me grab it. This hole just is a little bit too small when you uh, go to put the pump inside of it. So you will have to make this bigger. I actually didn't want to do that. So I did buy some uh, just regular sheet metal from my Menards um, and that I was gonna put in here, lay out, cut a bigger hole. I haven't done that, um, but I also don't mind it right now. So let's get started on how we did the pump. So the pump comes with about a 10, 12 foot cord. You will have to cut the end on it, which I will show you here in a second. Um, so you can actually plug it into the back of the machine so then you can control it from the actual computer and so the MOA activates it. So we'll start out here. So you can either spin this off and use the bigger pipe thread or there's a garden hose thread um, that screws into this adapter. I ended up just going with the garden hose adapter. This is 5 8 hose so I grabbed a 5 8 barb to a 3 quarter GHT which is garden hose thread. So I screwed that in there, put the hose on there, and as you can see, I snaked it through the inside. And then in the back of the machine, there is a hole, a slot, which is where the power cord and then the hose goes through. Now, when you put this through uh, and you set the pump in the tank, you will have to kind of push the tray in and then go around the back side and pull the loose lead through because it will sit on the back side and won't allow you to close it all the way. So this is pretty straight and simple how this is set up. So you'll just plop this in there, run the cord out back, put your adapter on, run your hose through the back side. Again, this is 5 8 hose. I wanted to go with something that had some good volume. Um, yes, the hoses that are in the machine get reduced down to a quarter, but that's okay because I feel like it creates a good amount of back pressure um, to fill all the lines. So we'll go to the back side of the machine now. As you can see, there's that slot I was talking about. Right here's my hose, and then right here's my power cable. So if you see right here is the spliced joint. Now, you will have to take the cord that's in the description, and I cut off about 12 inches. So I had some good uh, kind of leeway in case I messed up. So you want to cut off the female end because in the machine on the coolant pump power, it's a male end. So you want to make sure that matches. And that allows us to plug it into the back of the machine so the machine supplies power to the pump. This has a regular standard 115, so that's why we have to solder it. So if you guys don't know how to solder, you can leave a... Uh, comment and I can kind of go through how I soldered it together. Heat shrinked it and then I did heat shrink over this but then I also wrapped it in electrical tape just because this is around fluid and I just wanted to make sure that there was no chance that any 
fluid was going to get in there and cause it to short out. So again, you want to make sure that you leave a good amount of thread on, or sorry, <laughs> good amount of wire on this so you can put it all together. And I also kind of wanted this, this length so it kind of sits uh, up and away from the slot in case anything splashed out. So what I was saying earlier when you go to push the tank back, this will kind of sit in here. Um, so when you push the tank back, it'll hit it. So you have to kind of push it and then just start kind of pulling the, the lead through. So then it leaves a good amount of room. And you will have some dangle in here, but that's just okay because when you pull out the tank, you need that. Um, else it's going to be really hard. So if we follow it up, I have it coming up into this filter system. The reason why I did a filter system is because this is 5 8 hose. That pump can suck up eighth inch debris, so basically chips, as you can see. Um, so I wanted to make sure that uh, it didn't get sucked up and then stuck inside the machine manifold. So it comes up, and then I wanted to see the PSI for the incoming pressure. I bought these, uh, which is in the bill material on Amazon. They came in a uh, two-pack, I believe. So it goes through the filter. All the chips get, he get put in here. So now we have clean coolant coming through with no debris to clog up the lines. I also put an out pressure gauge because I wanted to kind of see how much re this was restricting it. This is not really necessary. So if you wanted to, you could actually just take this half NPT and put it straight into this body. But I wanted to see these gauges. So again, this is half NPT to a 5 8 barb, um, 5 8 ID hose. So uh, an important thing is also pay attention to make sure you're buying the right NPT. So this is half inch, not 3 8 not quarter. So this is actually quarter on this one right here, uh, which screws into this half NPT. So I snaked it around so I could kind of have some room. And then I came up on the top side of the machine and ran it down beside the head. I didn't go this way um, because I didn't want the manifold on that side because I do have the rapid turn attachment. So I want it on this side of the head so it'd be away from that. And these holes I did have to drill into the back of the sheet metal, but that's okay um, because this holds it perfectly. Same thing if, if you ever get cool mist you'll also have to drill it too. Um, so no matter what, you'll have to put holes in the machine. I put it on this panel um, because I didn't want to actually put it straightly to the machine panels because if you take this in and out, um, I didn't want it being in the way. So this way, I can actually take this panel off, set it down on the ground or down on something, and this can stay attached and all the coolant lines then become out of the way so I can lean in the machine and work on it if need be. So that's kind of my idea around that. And then I do try to keep this power cord away from anything that's right here in case this leaks, but this also has never leaked. So I'm not too concerned about that. Um, so again, we're coming up, we're going into the 5 8 barb, coming into this T, going through the filter, through the other T, coming out the line. And then in the machine, I have a four port manifold to release the coolant. So in the machine, I have a four port manifold. So on the back side, again, it's a half inch to five eighths bar. So the hose comes in through the top. And now you wanna make sure you leave enough slack because this head's gonna be moving up and down. So I set the mill to the lowest it could go. And then I ran the hose in and then put it in the back. So I actually attached it here, fed it through the top, and then after I gave me some slack, I cut it and then attached it to the barb that's on the back of the filter. So with this, it gets reduced to the lock line fitting size. Now this bracket I did make myself, so this is some scrap aluminum I had laying around. So what I did was on the bottom side of the head, there's four screws. I took two of them out. I measured that bolt pattern. I drilled two holes. And then if you can kind of see, I shaped it to kind of the width of that already existing plate. And then I marked out kind of a rough estimate of how far I want to come out and come over. 
Now this also is not done. I am going to take this off again at some point and trim this so it looks a, bit, a little bit neater. Um, but for right now it works. Um, so down the road I'll be doing that. So I had to put a plug in this end because if not it will come shooting out the front of this. So I just put a half inch plug in there. Now this manifold, the threads were really weird. They seem kind of shallow. So the threads actually don't screw in a whole bunch. Um, so for what we're doing, it doesn't really matter that much, but I just did think that was kind of weird. But these lock lines screwed in perfectly. Now, up here on the head, I just found some socket heads that were laying around in the shop. Drilled the holes in, the, in this plate and then just put some nuts on the back. And I think I put a lock washer on them too, so nothing too crazy. So then I screwed all these in, and you have to uh, screw these in and then attach these lines, because if not, it's going to get real messy when you're tightening all these lines. And that I, the reason why I put these on here is so you can do shutoffs. So I have two different tip sizes. I have the two large and then the two small. And the reason why I did that is because I kind of wanted to control different areas. So say I wanted uh, more pressure on the big ones for getting the chips out, then I'd turn off these small lines so I could get some more pressure and they come in real handy and also when you're tightening these these are plastic so don't crank them really tight they kind of self seal so get them snug and then uh, I aligned all mine so they were on the top you can do it on the bottom if you want and then I put an extension because uh, in the kit that I'm gonna have you buy uh, it comes with multiple uh, rows of these lines so I just snapped another set of line on and snapped the tip on so it's longer so then I can kind of reach around to different areas. These come in handy uh, kind of at this length because you can kind of fine tune and change the length but if you want longer ones there are enough left over in that kit to where you can change the length of these real easy. It also comes with different tips um, so that's kind of nice. Um, these are just what I chose and they've worked for me so far. Um, again Make sure you leave enough line, that's a big thing. I uh, don't want to cut it too short because then you're just going to have to either buy more hose uh, or just kind of have it bind up, which isn't a good thing. It's something you don't want. So I'll be telling you guys uh, these screw size here in the video. Um, also put that in the description and then the length you'll need. And then also include these plug and then all the lines. So. Everything in the list, you can buy it, watch this video, and I'll go through how I made it. Uh, I know I'm not taking everything apart and showing you how I put it together, but it really is something that's super simple that anyone can do. It's basically just threading on, sticking the hose on, putting a hose clamp on it, running the line. I don't think it's anything uh, that no one can do. If I can do it, any of you can do it. Um, so it's super simple. That's why I'm not going super detailed. I don't want to bore you with those details. Hey guys, so I hope you liked the video of how I did everything. I know I didn't do it from the ground up build, um, but this was something I already built and sadly I did not get a video of that. Uh, it was kind of an afterthought of probably people would like to see it built. Um, so if you want a super detailed breakdown of it, I will be willing to pull this out and take everything apart again if you would like. I think the hardest part for anyone would probably be the soldering of it. Everything else is really screwing in fittings, putting pipe tape on it, uh, and then going with it. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, so we'll be going over pros and cons now. So pros of it is uh, it's cheaper than the factory one. I feel like there's more pressure than the factory one. Uh, this is a third horsepower pump. I'm pretty sure factory uh, is a quarter. Um, so we just have a little bit more horsepower um, than what the factory one is. Uh, this one can actually suck up chips uh, and push them through. Um, I know sometimes kind of chips get clogged in the bottom of the coolant pumps and you got to take them out and clean them. The filter on the back is insanely nice because it doesn't clog the tips up because when the chips get in there, they're going to go through that manifold and as soon as they go into the lock lines, they usually clog so then you have to pull them all apart, blow them out, clean them. I've never had to clean the lock lines yet on this machine and hopefully I never will. Uh, all I've had to do is I think one time I had to pull the filter out uh, and take the chips out of it and that was it. Um, but it's been pretty straightforward. I think inlet pressure is around 7 to 8 PSI and then outlet is about 5 so we're not losing that much through that filter. 
Um, and five PSI doesn't sound like a lot, but it's in a five eighths diameter. So that's quite a bit of volume uh, flowing through there. And then when it comes to the lock line, it gets reduced in size to quarter. Um, so there's a lot of pressure going from five eighths to a quarter uh, shooting through that. Um, and I've noticed that it has uh, great um, chip movement. Uh, when the coolant hits it, it likes to kind of brush the chips away. I also wanted to talk about the coolant that I'm running. So uh, the local uh, distributor managed to get me a five gallon pail uh, sample um, uh, to try out for this machine. Uh, I believe it's Kim Cool. Uh, I'll have to see what uh, the actual like uh, model name of the coolant or the fluid is. Uh, I'll put that in the video. Um, but so far it's worked great. I haven't had any complaints. Um, I do go to the store and buy distilled water to run in the mill. I don't use anything, any well water, uh, it's because the minerals are in there. So it's pretty cheap just to go to Walmart, grab like 13 gallons, um, and then uh, I pour in uh, the uh, water and then I turn the pump on. I just start feeding in the oils to really get it all mixed together. Uh, because I don't mix it beforehand. I don't have a mixer at home um, uh, Kind of how like bigger shops have so that's kind of how I do it uh, It really just kind of helps uh, blend the oil and the water together I don't really have any issues uh, when it comes to the water evaporating uh, I think I've filled the machine maybe twice uh, since doing it and it's been a couple months now uh, So I'm doing pretty good on that um, now, if you are taking really aggressive cuts, uh, it will heat up and the water can evaporate. So you have to keep up on that. And then when you do put coolant in your machine, uh, whatever brand or whatever it is, just make sure you keep an eye on the ratio uh, when you mix it. And also, if you have a refractometer, check the refractometer, make sure it's within the specs they recommend. That will just kind of help it uh, last longer. Um, and also you get uh, better lubricity inside the, uh, your cuts. Uh, your tools will last longer um, because there's too much water. Uh, you can have rusting problems, uh, it evaporates more. Uh, so the coolant's in there to actually help take away the heat. Uh, water likes to evaporate. Um, so if it's too watered, it's, it's gonna start heating up more. So just keep an eye on that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I've, I've tried really hard to kind of explain everything that I did. Um, so if you have any comments, any questions, please leave them in the description. I'm sorry, in the comment section. And if you guys can, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to make some good videos for you guys. Uh, I know I'm just starting out, but I appreciate you guys watching it. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys have a good holiday. So thanks for watching and keep on machining.